Here is the theoretical background to the friction laboratory exercise. In this exercise, a wooden block with a weight on top is pulled across a level surface by a string. The tension in the string will be measured by a force sensor. The objectives of the exercise include deducing the coefficients of static and kinetic friction and then comparing them to each other as well as analyze how they may or may not depend on input variables. Read the instructions carefully, taking note of all input variables and what is being asked for. Because this is a force problem, you will need to set up a free body diagram. For simplification, we will treat the block and the weight on top as a single object because they are not slipping relative to each other. Make sure to set up the relevant coordinate system. As a friction problem, you will need an expression for the normal force using Newton's second law. If you conduct the experiment correctly, then neither in the static nor kinetic regimes will there be an acceleration. This means that the magnitude of the tensional force recorded should equal the magnitude of the frictional force. Now we can algebraically solve for the coefficients of friction. For static friction, we must plug in the maximum tensional force recorded before the block starts moving.
for kinetic friction, the relevant value of tension is an average taken after the block starts moving and is pulled at a constant velocity. Theoretically, the deduced coefficient of static friction must be greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction because otherwise the block would not be able to start sliding. Theoretically, the tensional force will be equal to the frictional force, which in turn is dependent on the normal force, and in this case, the weight. Hence, the resulting deduced coefficient of friction should not depend on the total mass. The coefficient of friction should also not depend on contact surface area. This is because no matter the orientation, the total normal force and hence frictional force would be the same. The coefficient of friction should only depend on the types of surfaces involved. Once you conduct the experiment and make measurements, you will be able to calculate the coefficients of friction. You will be able to verify the theory or if the results don't adhere to the theory, we'll be able to explain which of our input theoretical assumptions were incorrect.